today inshallah uh, as we announce in the group our presenter today is Malan Alamin Usman from Yobe State or oh, I say it's originally from Yobe but now we resided in Germany for PhD on Sheikh uh, Muhammad Gibrima Zulma Arif. He's doing his work in Sheikh Gibrima Zulma Arif and the Sheikh Usman Al Palati, uh, the two major scholars, Tijani scholars in uh, uh, Unguru and the north uh, northeast uh, of Paul, as you can see if you see that. So, inshallah, we are going to listen to him. I think we are going to talk today about. Uh, Abu Bakr Razi, and uh, this is the main point. After Abu Bakr Razi, we have another point that is the progress of free thought. So, inshallah, he will uh, try. He will present his uh, this to us. Inshallah, then we can have uh, more discussion after this. I think some brothers already read the chapter or read the topic. Just we are going to listen, then after discussion, maybe questions and uh, observation. Malala, I mean, Bismillah. So, mashallah. Thank you so much for your introduction. Can you hear him? You can you hear him, Malam? Because he he is joining via Zoom. You are only the one who joined via Zoom. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I hope you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Okay, so mashallah. Uzbillah, Samil Ali, Minash, Shaitan, Rajim, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. As um, uh, our brother, uh, Sheikh Tahir, has already said that today, our uh, presentation is on the uh, Abakar al Razi. And I have taken the, what can I say? They uh, ought to uh, briefly read something about him. Mm. Yeah, because I didn't read much. Yeah, mm. just briefly read or glance the book. Then I make some yeah some notes that I'm going to present to you. Yes. Yeah, maybe after the presentation, then if you have any question or correction or something, then or just discussion, then yeah, we'll open the door for that. Yeah. Uh, for the, I think for the sake of clarity, or uh, I can say, I divided my presentation into different uh, sections. Number one, I have to look at the 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 full name of the sheikh yes. in question. Then I'm going to also look at the place where he was born, dead, and then I'm going to look at his career. Yeah. Then I'm going to look at, uh, mention some of his works. And the same time, I'm going to look at some of his achievements. Then I'm going to also discuss about the criticism yeah, against him or against his teachings. Then I'm also going to talk about his uniqueness. I think that is going to be the, like, the conclusion, the, the lessons to derive from his yeah, from his biography and his contributions yeah. to knowledge. Yeah. Uh, the scholar or the philosopher in question is called uh, Abu Bakr Muhammad Ibn Zakaria Ar-Razi. No. Yeah, but he was popularly known as Razis in the western world yeah. in the islamic world they know him as uh abaka arazi yes. but in the western world like in europe in some parts of the west they call him radis that is all mm -hmm. and his latinized name is also radis but with h not with uh, r a z i s but r a uh, sorry r h a z e s they call him radis no. He was born in 1854 in the city of Rai. The city of Rai is situated very close to the city of Iran. Sorry, Tehran in Iran. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Arazi 
was considered by the author of the book I have read, I even forgot the name of the author, as the successor of Al-Kindi. Mm. In terms of their philosophy and contribution to knowledge, it's just like the successor of the there is a difference between Arazi and Al Kindi in terms of everything, but in what can I say, like in the trends of Islamic philosophy, yes. scholars consider him as a successor because he comes after uh, Al Kindi. And he was violently non conformist scholar or philosopher <laughs> because he is always against the conservatives. And he's always against the orthodox scholars or philosophers. Yeah. So we call him nonconformist. Yeah. And then he was one of the chief architects or propounders of the Platonist of Islam or Platonist philosophy in Islam. Mm. Okay. Let's move to his career. Uh, Abakar Arazi was a musician was the musician he flute he's a flute lute or lute, sorry lute player yeah he used to like flow the flute or something like that and he was also a money charger until his studies so money charger or charger he didn't start studying medicine or anything he was only like making some theories in music yeah, and then making money laundry and some other things up to the edge of 30 when he switched to, uh, to, to medicine, to study medicine. Yeah, he studied medicine and probably philosophy from his teacher, Ali Ibn Sahal Rabban al Abari. Yeah, he studied under him, but some scholars say that he also studied medicine under this Ibn Rabba. But mm -hmm. some they also say that he studied philosophy under him. That is to say that up to now, scholars they don't know that from where uh, uh, this guy got his I can guess, his knowledge of philosophy, or no, nobody mentioned his teacher, or nobody knows his teacher, his philosophical teacher. Nobody knows that, but people know that he studied under uh he studied medicine under ibn rabban yeah now uh, they said that everything medicine yeah it, it is traced back to back to his teacher but his philosophical teachings they actually don't know anything about it mm. yeah um as a doctor uh he he was popularly known as a doctor than philosopher. Yeah, he was popularly known as a physician, as a doctor than a philosopher. That is to say that his reputation or reputation in philosophical world or in philosophy is less known by, by the scholars. Or in, when you compare it with his like, yeah, with his, uh, uh, what can I say, his contribution or his scientific knowledge or scientific contribution as a physician. Uh, after he studied medicine, he started working in a Bumaristan. Bumaristan, that is, is a name for, uh, name for hospital in Rai. They call it Bumaristan. Yeah, he's a medical doctor and alchemist. He worked also in Tamani Prensley uh, cult during the reign of Mansur Ibn Ishaq. No. Yeah, he was called upon, yeah, and he was given appointment. He stopped when he becomes a doctor, or after he becomes a doctor, he stopped in his hometown, that's in the city where he was born, in Iraq. But after that, he moved to, to Baghdad, where he was given appointment. Mm -hmm. When uh, Mansur Ibn Ishaq built a hospital and he was looking for a like um, professional an experienced doctor to be giving the hospital to him to look after the patients. Then he was told about, yeah, because he pimped, his pimps reached off to Baghdad and he, he the, 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 the caliph was told about the, the Abakar, Abakar Arazi. And then he called Abakar Arazi from right to Baghdad 
where he was given a hospital from the the, the hospital was already given i was already doomed and was given to him but some they said that no the caliph sorted his advice when he was consulted to where to uh to 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 construct the mark uh, sorry the, the the hospital he said that he needs meat pieces of meat and he was given pieces of meat and it was hung all over the city yes so his idea his observation was is that where this meat will like serve longer or will last longer without water so wherever that place like where the, the meat lasts longer without rotten then it will be suitable for the construction of the hospital because the air will be fresh and the environment will be good for the body of his patient then the marks sorry the hospital was built yeah there yes, yes. and yeah as a doctor he was one he was one of the best physician or doctors doctors to, to concentrate on the psychological side of medicine and healing yeah before I, before arazi nobody like make an effort to look at the mental health or psycho yeah psychological side of the, the medicine or healing he was the first person to to explore that area or that field mm -hmm. yeah he experimented the relationship between body and soul and was determined by the soul therefore the medical practitioner should be a good soul doctor ah he also tried to study the soul of the human and to know the relationship between the soul and the body. And he discovered that the soul, the healing of human body can be determined by the soul. Yes. If that is the case, then a doctor, a medical doctor should also be a what? Should also be a soul doctor, a spiritual. Yes. What he was trying to, to reconcile between spirituality and medicine. This is what he was trying to do. Again, another uh, contribution, or uh, uh, what can I say, Look, another experiment he made as a medical doctor, he also came with the idea of corpse preservation. Like after somebody dead, if he wants the dead body to be preserved, then he gave a method that could be very simple or that is he gave a method that is very simple that can everybody do it if he wants to yeah to want to to, pre to to preserve the dead body that method it was in existence or it has been used in europe up to 18th century yes. that is from the 9th century up to 18th century the method is one you have to remove the intestine of the the dead body Second, you have to wash the body cavities with vinegar and wine spirit. So vinegar is cult, 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 I think. Cult, cult. Yeah. Cult, yeah. Cult, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, and then the thirdly, filling the cups with aromatic, um, aromatic medicines and preserving salts. Aromatic, like something which is very, very good. Uh, what can I say? With good, good smell. So you have to fill the dead body, the, the, the body of the dead body with that aromatic stuffs, and then with uh, preserving salts. Then by doing that, he believed that the dead body will uh, remain or last longer. Yeah. Mm. So as a philosopher, that is that is his what I'm sorry to say. This is like his uh, his profession or his career as a as a medical doctor. And but his career as a philosopher, he was considered as I have already said it um, earlier that he was because he was considered as he was considered as the successor of Al Kindi, and he was interested in only three areas in philosophy. That is metaphysics, theory of knowledge and ethics he's only interested in these three areas yeah 
yeah, in the ethics, sorry, in the air, sorry, in the theory of knowledge, I'm coming to metaphysics, but let me begin with the theory of knowledge. In the theory of knowledge, Arazi believed that if somebody really wants to be knowledgeable, the guy must one study the grammar, the poetry, and the rhetoric, and also study all other parts of philosophy. Yeah. And at the ethics, he divided the soul, the human soul, into three parts. Mm. That is the rational or the divine, then the irrecible or the animal, and then the consistent or vegetative. Before that, scholars used to divide the soul into two. We have the rational and irrational soul. Everybody knows that. And then plus, uh, like, uh, sorry, the stupids used to divide it into three. Uh, if I remember, a nafsul lawama, a nafsul uh, lawama, um, uh, sorry, mutuma inna, the last one, but amara, nafsul amara, nafsul lawama, and nafsul mutuma inna. But yeah, there is a topic on it, this one. Yeah. So scholars used to divide that. He said that the relationship between these three parts or these, these three parts of the soul is a is consistent vegetative as nutrition to the body being the instrument of the soul. He said the ultimate goal of the soul is to understand it is genuine nature as immaterial substance which will prepare someone to join the intelligible world. If not, it will be infected with anxiety and pain. Okay, he said that the ultimate goal of our souls is to understand ourselves, to know that we are immaterial. Yeah. So that we will prepare ourselves into intelligible world. Because he believed, Arazi believed that after this world, the world we are going is philosophical world, is intelligible world, like what uh, Plato said. This is like something philosophical thing. So after this world, we are going to intelligible world. So whatever we are doing, here on earth, we are preparing ourselves to go to where to go to uh, uh, intelligible world. So he said that if somebody is not preparing himself for that, if you somebody is not targeting that goal, that is preparing himself to go to intelligible world, then his mind, sorry, his soul will be affected by anxiety and pain. He said that. Sexual is the strongest, is the strongest desire or error to which probably reduce someone to, to a beast. One of the, the one of the one of the, the problem of the soul is the, is the sexual something because he said that the soul is always filled with, with love. So one of the thing, one of the things is uh, is, uh, is is sexual desire. So he said that this sexual desire will reduce someone even to the level of a beast. So this thing can be, I think, can be related to the to 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 what is happening now in northern Nigeria. This issue of rape. Yeah. When somebody raped a lady, when somebody raped a small girl. Yeah. So Araji was trying to say that he raped her because. He was rushing, ir, ir, he was rationally low yeah. to the level of a beast, to the level of an animal that can even kill, that can do anything. So if somebody commits uh, some, uh, a rape or something just to, 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 uh, to satisfy his sexual desire, so he's like, he's animal. And this is also what the prophet has already said that, that if anybody would not, uh, sorry, Nobody will go for sexual intercourse or sex, sexual intercourse or adultery without, sorry, having his own pet in him. That is to say that before somebody can go to commit a, a sex, sorry, so, uh, adultery or sexual something, yeah, his pet has already been removed from him. So that is to tell you that he was what? Irrational. He was irra because Philosophically, I have told you that people are divided into two. We have the rational and we have the irrational. The rational, they are humans. Humans are rational. But animals, all of them are irrational. No matter how you train a dog as your pet, 
Sometimes it must misbehave. It may even bite somebody to tell you that it is what it is irrational. So the same thing, so sexual desire can reduce the level of somebody. That is in, it is what, what can I say? His IQ to the level of a beast, to level an animal that can even kill. Yeah. Uh, he said that the cure of the soul is through the analysis of biblical propensities such as uh, such as um, uh, arrogance and the so these are some of the the, 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 the uh, sorry the problem of the the soul that is the evil propensities of the soul like an uh, envy lying arrogance all these bad things yeah. He said that there are two ways to combat fear because when you are living in art, people are always afraid of death. They are fearing of death. He said that why should somebody fear of death? Mm, yes. He said that there are two ways to combat this fear. Mm. Open, he said that one, open, sorry, death, soul will enter good. Yeah, sorry, what he was trying to say is that. You should not need, you should not fear death because after you dead, your condition there in heaven will be better, will be good than your present condition. That is your the present situation you find yourself. So if that is the case, there is no need to fear death because if you go there, you will enjoy that. You will enjoy. And second, you have to pass it people. Or you have to pursue someone, or you have to pursue yourself that, or to convince yourself that it is even irrational to fear to fear that because nobody will experience pain after death. So pain or injury is always bound to sensation. So after you death, according to him, after you are dead, so nothing will happen to you. So there you don't need to fear death. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, his philosophical view, yeah, on the soil, I have said. And then he he also he was also considered one of the critic of divine and revelation religions. He always he was always attacking or criticizing. The divine revelation or divine religion, religion which are claimed to have come from God. So he's always attacking religion or these religions. He said that he started with the prophecy. He said that it is irrational to believe in prophet uh, Nubuwa, prophet prophethood. It is irrational to believe in it. Why? Because the, 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 the knowledge human has, the reason, the reason is okay for human being or for mankind to live on earth. That is enlightenment, enlightenment and reason is okay for, 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 for human or mankind to live on earth. So there is no need for God to send a prophet and the prophets, they are even claiming that they are better than other people. They are even claiming that they have miracles. So there is no need to, to believe in, in, in prophecy. Yeah. He's always, that is why he was always attacking Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu because he said that the reason is enough to enlighten and guide mankind. So there is no need for God to send a prophet on earth to guide people. Yeah. And he was only saying that he was only say, he was also saying that the reason why he was attacking the prophet is because um, nobody, no one on earth will have special qualities, yeah, than any other person. So, so the prophet they said that they spoke with God, they do that, they do all this are irrational to believe in all these are irrational yeah and also he said that 
he also attacked the Quran. He said that Muslims always claim that if you are knowledgeable, you can produce something comparable to the Quran. He said that, oh, in fact, we could, reduce, we could produce, sorry, we could reproduce a thousand similar products of the Quran from the works of rhetoricians, rhetorics, poets, excellent speakers. Yeah, he said that nothing in the Quran but old myths full of contradiction and does not, does not, does not have any valuable information or relevance on the earth. So according to Abu Bakr al-Razi. That is why I wanted to even change, I wanted this evening to change my, my presentation to, is Abu Bakr al-Razi Muslim philosopher? That what I wanted to, to, to because he was always attacking, attacking, um, attacking Islam or attacking, sorry, not attacking Islam, but he believed in God. So we cannot call him atheist because he believes in God. Yeah, but he didn't believe in Prophet Suits or Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he didn't Quran. So I don't think if this guy will be considered as, as a Muslim scholar, as a philosopher, even though some scholars recognize him as a Muslim. So I don't think let me continue. Maybe after the yeah the presentation, we will discuss about it. Yeah. yeah. He also classified, yeah, this is his, uh, also another, sorry, uh, not philosophy. Let me finish with the philosophy before I move to, to alchemist. Um, he said that he divided the, the story cre of creation into six different parts. In Islam, especially among the Sufis, I know that they started with the the prophet's life, that is like Ika Muhammadiyah, and yeah, O Muhammad Nur, yeah, down to the Adam, yeah, and subsequent something. But he said no. He said that, yeah, even this, he got it from other philosophers like Plato, Haranian, and Mycenaean uh, sources, and then he combined all these things. He divided into five, sorry, not six. He said that one, we have God the creator. He, he was referring as the perfect intellect. Second, we have eternal matter that made of the atoms. Third, he said we have universal souls that is always striving for perfection. He said, fourth, we have absolute and eternal time. Fifth, he said that we have absolute and eternal space. According to him, these are the this what makes the creation. He said that he wanted to start. He said that uh, the God first created himself. Then he created the matter and he created the soul. In according to his own space and time. But he asked himself, why did God decide to create the world if that is the case? Why did God create the world itself? Then he said that when God created the soul, the soul was filled with ish, that is with love. Yeah, when he filled it with, with love, then, um, then the God created the matter. Yeah. Then, yeah. If I, I get it well, because I read it once, I told you I even had the time, I didn't have time, but I read it once. Yeah, he said that that perfection, sorry, is striving to be to be to, 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 to perfection. So the God created the the sorry, created the, the soul, and the soul was filled with love with ish. And then oh, then he created the matter. I forgotten the sorry. Mm. Oh, sorry. He said that is by post because the God, the, the soul was in what is was created with love. It was full with love. And then the love was in, in need of the matter. And then this post the God to even created the world itself. 
according to him. So if I'm not mistaken, if, if I'm making mistaken, I know Sheikh Tahir will correct me. And uh, yeah, and then he classified the minerals also. In alchemist, he classified the minerals into six. Yeah, minerals here we are talking about the natural resources, gold, salt, silver, yeah, ash, natron, urine, then he divided them into six different parts. The four, spirit, al arwah that is the mercury, the sulfur, and some other things, and seven bodies, al adsat the silver and the golden tartine, sorry, stones, sorry, the pirates, the seven vitriols, the seven uh, borates, and 11 so all so these are some of his contribution but because of his philosophy and other things this guy was attacked by the muslim scholars one by the muslim scholars sorry and then by sorry by the ashrites and by the ismailis and by the um i forgot their name those the followers of Aristotle because they said he also he also derived from the teaching he, he went astray from the teaching of the of Aristotle but the Ashrite and Ismailis attacked him because he diverted from the uh, from the teaching of Islam so he was attacked yeah as a result of this the hospital where he was working was also what they also dismissed him then he lost his job. Then he went back to his hometown to write, where he continued teaching. Yeah. And he has his own disciples there who used to attend his lectures. Yeah. And he divided them or he formed them into cycles. When he asks a question or when a patient came, then the first cycle will be asked. If they fail to answer the question, the same second cycle will be asked. Mm -hmm. If they fail, then up to the last. When they all fail, then he will answer the, the question by himself. And uh, after he lost his job, then in Iran, again, he doesn't have job. And he also suffered from glaucoma, eye problem. So mm -hmm. he moved to his sister's house or sister's home in Baghdad. Hmm. Yeah, his sister took him to, to, uh, to a medical doctor who will cure his eye, but he refused to accept it because he asked the doctor, how many, do you know the anatomy or how many liars our eyes have? Then the doctor failed to answer the question. He said, she said that my eyes will not be treated by somebody who doesn't even know the anatomy of an eye or the structure of an eye. Then he died in Baghdad in 1925. Some they say 15 October, some they say 27 October, yeah, 1925, but some they say 1935. Yeah, so um, I think our time is going up. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Running. So yeah. you have something concerning the second topic, second point? No, I didn't finish. I'm sorry, I'm just about to finish. Okay. Yeah, I'm just about to finish. But can you please, um, what can I say, cancel this meeting, then we'll start new again? Uh, okay. Why we don't, we, what do you have, we have four minutes. We have four minutes remaining. We can end it. We can spend these four minutes, then we can... Yeah, but I think because I have to, I have uh, this works here, but I don't think it's four minutes is enough. Just, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay, there are about 224 books or works accredited to him or credited to him. That is to say that some scholars said that he authored more than or almost, yeah, 224 books on every aspect of philosophical and scientific subject with the exception of mathematics. 
he is not interested in mathematics. Yeah. But every aspect of science and philosophy, he has a work on it. But for the the the, the mathematics, no, he doesn't have any. And his foremost and most important work is a medical encyclopedia, yeah. and it is entitled Al Hawi Al Hawi P P Dub. Yeah. But in Latin, they call it Liber Continent. They call it. And some of his books were Kitabu Sirri, Kitabu Siratul Falsafia, the book on the career of philosophy, Kitabu Dib, Dibu Rohani, yes. the book of, spirit, so of spiritual medicine. Yeah. Then Kitabu Mansuri, Pidub, dedicated to Abu Sali, Mansur Ibn Ishaq. And then he has also Kitabu Sir Al Sir, the book of the secret of secrets. Really? And Kitabu Muhammad Al Al Talimi. So most of these books, 200 and something, were not being found now. They were not being found now. They are not available in the library because people know them, sorry, people know them because of the polemical responses to its contents. People used to like criticize him, to criticize some of his work, some, some scholars. So from there, people know that, oh, he uttered that because another scholar make a rejoinder or attack him or attack his idea. They say, oh, he also wrote this book. So from there, people were able to know that he wrote more than 224 works. Then, his achievements and contributions. In, yeah, he was considered the father of neurology and neuroanatomy. I told you that he is interested in mental illness. Yeah. The time for it, we have less than one minute. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can stop and uh, end the meeting so we can.